Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Stress Knits podcast. My name is Stacy, also known as Stress Knits Yarn on Instagram and Stress Knits over on Ravelry. So hi, how are you doing? Today is November 15th, I believe. This won't be hitting the YouTube channel until December, but this video is brought to you by my patrons who also are having um, about two weeks extra time with this video before it becomes public. I uh, just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports me over there. It's incredible and I appreciate it so, so much. And I love being able to do extra content like this for you. So I was sitting down and writing a blog post about my favorite tools that makes knitting more enjoyable. And I thought it might be more fun if I did a quick video showing you them and talking to you in a little in depth about why I like them, how I use them, what I use them for trial and error and all that good stuff because it has taken me, I started knitting in 20, 13? It was like November 2013, so I'm coming up on my six year anniversary, which is crazy. Yeah, because I learned how to knit via YouTube over Thanksgiving break from college, my sophomore year. So yeah, that would be 2013. Yes. Oh, that's crazy. I thought it was 2014, but then I remembered it was November. Anyway, um, so it's not like I've been knitting for a very long time, but six years is still a substantial <laughs> amount of time to be doing something. And over the years, I have kind of curated and changed what I like and what I don't like. And I'm very happy with what I have now. For a long time, if you hear pug noises, it's my dog, Esther. Um, but for a long time, I wanted to have like the cool stuff or the stuff everybody was using. When I first started out, I really didn't know what to buy. So I would listen and watch my favorite knitting podcasts. So like Kristen of Volenvine, um, who else was I listening to at that time? The Knit Girls. <laughs> this is embarrassing. Um... I know Kemper of Junk Yarn when she started. Um, just all of these people that I found super inspiring and kind of fueled my creativity. I was like, oh, that's the needle they use. I'm going to try that. Or, oh, they're using that project bag. You know what? I might like that too. Let me grab that. And then as I matured, <laughs> as both a human and as a knitter, I really... Um, kind of stopped that and now I I know what my style is I know what I like I know what I don't like so it's been a lot easier <coughs> excuse me it's been a lot easier to pick and choose what kind of tools that I like to use because I think tools are just as important as the yarn because without the tools I don't think knitting would be as enjoyable as it can be so I'm gonna take a quick drink of coffee because it is that time of year where my coffee is filled with Christmas flavors instead of pumpkin spice or vanilla so right now I have caramel brulee in my iced coffee in case you're wondering and that is a tool for me I love coffee and it's kind of a necessity sometimes especially when I'm knitting. So let's, I don't know. I don't know where to start. I have a list in front of me, but I don't know. So let's first talk about pens and markers and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I use two marker pens kind of exclusively. When I use ballpoint pens, I'm a, I like blue ink, but when I use um, like felt tip or markers or anything like that. I prefer black. So I use this precise pilot rolling ball extra fine pen. 
I use this a lot for like ball bands and um, a lot of stress knit stuff, but I also use it when I write show notes, all that stuff, but and mark up patterns. But I also, I use these two interchangeably. The other one is the Papermate Flare Pen. I was, I've been obsessed with these my entire young adult life. So like in high school, I used to write my planners, a certain class would be a certain color, and I'd always use these flare felt tip pens. I I love them so much that when um, some stuff happened, my friend made me a care package and she sent me a little pack of flare tip pens because she knows how much I love them. So those are the writing utensils that I use with knitting. So notes or little notations on patterns like I'm knitting uh, this pattern that has a chart and I'm marking off how many repeats I've done to keep track that's just the easiest way for me to do it so yes I think these are very important in my knitting life and just everyday life and then along with that I use a lot of post-it notes it's it's really nice. I won't show you that because it has like custom order stuff on it, but I use a few different types, which I mean, I love post-it notes. They help me stay organized. I'll have them all like hanging in front of me. I will put them in notebooks, like when I'm not sure what I want to talk about or like I have swatch information on post-it notes. Um, I have whip down notes and post-its just so that, I don't know, it helps me stay organized. And I always have this weird feeling when I have like notebooks or planners or something, I feel like I'm going to ruin them. <laughs> and, um, like if I make a mistake, so sometimes this is like my rough draft. I don't know, I love post-its. So I love the lined ones. And I love the plain ones, but I prefer more vibrant colors. And I also love the notepad ones with lines. I use these very, very much. Oh, I love them. I wish they came in like pretty pastel colors that weren't like super dull. But you know. So those are like my writing utensils and I also use those to leave notes about where I am in patterns or like my swatch information. Um, yeah, I use post-it notes a lot. The next thing I'm going to talk about is stitch markers. So I used to be really into like progress keepers and all of that fun stuff, which I still really love. I have some that I really like. Um, like I will always use my pug loaf my little pug loaf I think this is from Super Super Ventures I'll always use that because I really enjoy it um but I don't really have I found that they're incredibly heavy on on my projects and sometimes they like pull stitches a little too much I didn't take one out, but like the bulb stitch markers, do I have one anywhere? This was poor planning on my part. I have everything except for these. But the little Edison bulb stitch markers are metal, or I also really love using, do I have a project with them? Yes, I do. I also really love using um, these Clover Uh, locking stitch markers. I use these a lot for, um, I use them as stitch markers, but I also really like to use them as progress keepers, or I use them to mark increases and decreases, especially in sleeves. So I find those super handy. I got a huge pack of them. I think it was like a hundred in like 10 different colors. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And it's like this little case and it's just a bunch of them and I got them off Amazon. For like $13 maybe, might have been less than that. And I use them all the time. So I really love those. But I also 
really love just like regular stitch markers. So this has also been trial and error because I've had a lot of different stitch markers. It's just one of those things where you're trying to figure out what you like, what's easy for you to slip, and what's easy to see. So there are two types that I use. The ones that I use the most are my metal ones. So I have both triangles. I don't know if you can see that. I use the triangle ones and I also use the hexagon ones. I'm pretty sure I got these off of Etsy years ago. I'm not sure where, but if you Google metal stitch markers, <laughs> these will probably come up. Um, the other ones that I really like to use, I think I also got these off of Amazon. Um, they're just four color little rings. And I like to use these when I'm doing um, raglans or if something if there's like a panel that I need to do something different I like to use these to be like hey you're doing something different now um, so there's like a bright yellowish green and orange a blue and a pink so I use these all the time too next cable needles so I'm not a huge cabler the first time I ever needed to use a cable needle was when I did the Clark Socks by Jacqueline Salem of Brooklyn Knit Folk. And that was the first time I bought a cable needle. And then I lost it. <laughs> so I have since been doing a cardigan that has cables on it. And there are two kinds of cable needles that I really enjoy. I prefer one over the other, but they're perfect and I just like the run-of-the-mill clover ones they're plastic I think they come in pretty colors so I use the hooks and these little these little guys I don't know what they're called but I prefer so I prefer smaller ones but I don't really cable anything bulky I will eventually make an Andawa by Michelle Wong and I will need the bigger ones for that because it's worsted weight but I prefer the hook I think the hook is a lot simpler and it doesn't stick out and I can just like rest it like this instead of it being out like this, out like this so I like that I can just like hold it here and then pop it up when I need to knit from it so those are the cable needles I use and then I recently become obsessed with fixing drop stitches with a crochet hook. I used to just knit up um, and like untwist the stitch every row and all of that stuff, but now that I know how to fix something with a crochet hook, I prefer these. So there's a medium size, but it's in one of my project bags, I don't know. So these are ebony crochet fix-it hooks. They come in a set of three. I use this one the most, this little guy. Um, I think I purchased this from Twig and Horn, if I remember correctly. But it's just a nice, simple little crochet hook that I can just carry the yarn up if I drop a stitch, which happens. <laughs> Next, darning needles. So I'm not super picky about darning needles. I just love my chibi. Um, this is the green one, so it has the the big one for like worsted weight and then two smaller ones. So this is really all I use. Um, I buy one every few years because I always end up losing the medium one, which is the one I use the most. So I just recently bought a new one. Um, that's, that really distracted me. Uh, let's talk about snips. So snips are very important. <laughs> I don't, I don't like breaking yarn with my hands. It hurts. Unless it's like Brooklyn Tweed and I can just pull it apart. But I have been on the search for the perfect snip. So I originally was just using these scissors but they're kind of big and bulky. Um, 
yeah, I wanted something more compact and I also didn't want to have to find my pair of scissors every time. So I wanted enough to put into project bags. So I, I got a set of crane scissors. You can find these basically anywhere because it's just a little crane. See the little eyeball? So little crane snips and I love these. These are brass and they're super sharp and I love them and they make a really satisfying sound. So I love these, but then I was following, I am following the fold line in the UK and they posted this picture of some beautiful snips and I had to buy them even though they were in the UK and I just love them and I bought three of the four colors and I'm kind of regretting not buying the fourth color so that will probably happen eventually but they just came in my color palette and I kind of I just I had to it was one of those weird days where I was just like in a weird mood and I was like you know what's gonna make me happy pretty scissors <laughs> so this was holding that down so these are uh, cotton Clara scissors that's where I got them from and they're just these beautiful metal scissors they're heavy and they come in the mint the pink and the mustard and they also come in a lilac but these are my three favorites and they're pretty affordable I think I think for like the three of these I paid like $21 so they're pretty affordable and it's nice because I can now put my snips into different project bags which will be really handy so that I'm not like searching for something that can cut my yarn when I'm out and about and these are very very sharp um so I would just be cautious about that yes I love 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 these snips I've been using them a lot and I they're just so sharp and satisfying next we're gonna talk about like wool care. So my favorite thing, which I think a lot of knitters love, is tufted woolens. And I love a few other um, sock soap companies. Like I love Woolen Co, uh, Twig and Horn, their rosewood soap is one of my favorites. Anything rose scented, I'm kind of a sucker for. But I really just love tuft woolens. It makes my knits smell really good and it makes everything super soft. I also wash all of my hand dyed yarn in tuft woolens, unscented, and it's just the best. So, tuft woolen sock soap. This is the vanilla almond, which is my favorite right now. Usually I'm a lavender girl with them, but I don't know, there's just something about this. It just smells so good. I love almond scented things. So vanilla almond. And then I also really love their hand balm. This is super old. I actually need to get a new one. It's almost out. But the only time that I really put lotion on my hands is in the winter. And now that it's it's fall, but it's snowed outside. So it's kind of winter here in Michigan. And I know yeah, this is so old <laughs> but um this is the Russian flower scent which I really like too um it's just lanolin rich and so I just put it on like the tops of my hands because that's what gets the most dry the bot the pads of my hands are usually fine it's the tops they get really really cracked and sad um so I use this during the winter next we're gonna talk about measuring so there are a few tools I use to measure knitting or gauge or needles. And so the first I have just really simple tape measures. I got a pack of four on Amazon. There were these two colors. So it's the pink, the mint, there's a blue and a white that comes in the pack together. And again, it's like $8 for the four of them. And they work perfectly. It's exactly what I want. Um, yeah, just retractable tape measure. I love it. Super simple. I love things that are really simple and affordable and also in my color palette, which is really nice. And then I have two 
tools from Twig and Horn that I cannot recommend enough. So I have the full on gauge ruler. This is the four inch swatch. I started swatching once I bought this and my garments actually fit me now. So this is incredibly important if you are a garment knitter to know your gauge. You don't have to get the Twig and Horn one, but I think a gauge swatch measurer that's like specifically for gauge swatches is just really convenient. There is a 3D printed one by Acreworks and it narrows down your row and your column, um, or your row and your stitches. And I really would like that too, but every time I look for it, it's out of stock. So that is going to be something that I use, but it just, it narrows down the one row that you have to count and you just count down the four stitches and across the four stitches and then you have your the four inches, not stitches, the four inches, and then you have your gauge, and it's just super convenient. This one also has the needle sizer at the bottom, which I really like. So this one usually stays in my office on my desk because it is pretty big and bulky. But I also purchased this little guy, also from Twig and Horn, um, I just, I like Twig and Horn a lot. They're the sister company to Quince and Company, which is like my favorite sweater yarn. <laughs> so I just love Twig and Horn. And this is just a needle um, sizer along with a four inch ruler. So I just stick this in like my notions pouch, which is this from Wool and Honey. You can get this on their website or in their shop. You can tell it's mine because there is a coffee stain. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of this stuff goes in my Notions pouch. But yeah, so I stick that in my Notions pouch and my Notions pouch will like hop around with me. It usually lives on my desk, but sometimes it goes into project bags. So yes, these are very important. Um, I love having this when I'm on a trip because I use needles that you can't always tell what size they are because the size is on the cord, which we will talk about. Is that all the smaller things? Yes. So let's talk about needles and needle um, storage. That's the word. So for needle storage, I use the Plystra P-L-Y-S-T-R-E, for those of you who are wondering, the Plystra Needle Case. This is relatively new. I think it came out last year. And I have been obsessed with this since I saw the mock-up of it. And I finally bit the bullet and I bought one. Um, they are, I wouldn't say they're expensive, but they're pricey. Um... Yeah, but someone who has a bunch of needles because I don't I don't love interchangeable needles. I'm trying to find an interchangeable set that I love. Um but I prefer fixed circulars. So I have a lot of them. And so when you have a lot of them, they're just kind of everywhere and then you misplace some and then you buy more and it's just a nightmare. So this is my way of keeping all of my favorite needles in one place when they're not on a project. It's just perfect. This is the medium size. It comes in three sizes. So there's a small, a medium, and a large. The medium is recommended for fixed and double points. Um, I really like the small one because it's a little shorter and fatter, but I don't know if these would fit in there. So it has a leather top, a little snap, and then it's an accordion. So in here I have all of my, most of my Addies that are not on projects right now. There's some exceptions to that, like I have a pair in my little, like, uh, what's it called? My mug of markers and pens on my desk. I don't know why, but I do. So the way that I do it, so all of my like twos and unders go in this pocket 
and then three, four, five, six, seven, because those are the ones that I use, and then eight and up are in the back. Um, yeah, because I have multiple sets of threes, fours, fives, and six, and sevens, because those are what I use the most. But I love this. I think I will get one more of these so I can have like my smaller needles and my larger needles. So like doing a one through seven and then eight and up just to make it a more effective system for me so that I'm not sizing everything when I pull things out of certain pockets. But yes, I love this. I love this so much. So then let's talk about my needles. So I have gone through plenty of stages and I think this is a very common practice with knitters that we kind of ebb and flow through what we like and what we don't like. Like if we like magic loop or double points or two circs or two at a time, one at a time or super wash, non super wash, cardigans, pullovers, socks, shawls, hat, like we just kind of it just, it moves. <laughs> like, I haven't knit a pair of socks in two years-ish. And I just cast on a pair of socks today because I just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious how this colorway knits up and I would love some Christmassy socks this year. But I haven't knit socks in a really long time. Um, so I feel that that's the same way about needles. However, for like the past three years, these have been my favorite. And I've been slowly, slowly collecting a full set. So these are Addy Rockets. And I am obsessed. This one has a little bit of a tarnish on it because I use these so much. Um but I love them. So there are, people usually have a few different issues with this. One of them is the smell. I don't know what people are talking about. They don't smell to me. Um, I do know that it has to do with certain people's um, chemical compounds of sweat when you're knitting because your hands sweat. And um, for some people it like wears the varnish off really fast and there's a smell. I've never had that problem. Um, yeah, I've just, I've never, never encountered that. So for me, this, this needle's perfect, <laughs> but I do understand that everyone has their personal preference. So this isn't saying these are the best needles in the whole world. They're just the best needles for my needs. So I love how slick the needle itself is. I think it's nickel plated copper, if I remember correctly. And I love the blue cord. I love it. I know a lot of people don't. I do. I love its memory with not too much memory. And I love its flexibility without it being floppy. I love it. I love it so much. Okay. And then the needle tip. So they are pointy. Yeah, can you see the varnish on there? They're pointy but they're not stabby like a high, a high, a sharp or a signature needle, which I prefer. I like something sharp enough to wear if I need to get into a few stitches or if I'm cabling without a cable needle or if I just have to do something, even like a knit two together, it, I don't get frustrated with a blunt tip. Actually, are these? It's gonna be embarrassing if I'm no I'm right. Okay. Because I do have some just oh I do have some just regular Addies also, but these are the rockets. Um yeah, so they're just they're just fast. They help me knit fast. I love the way they pair with my yarn that I use. I they just it all fits really well for me. And again, this is a personal preference. This is in no way a like blanket statement. But again, for me and the way that I knit, 
the Addy Rockets are everything to me. But the size is on the cord <laughs> and I, I can't see <laughs> that close up. Um, I am farsighted. So, yeah, I cannot see. And I know a bunch of you are like, then why do you wear glasses? It's because my eyes cross when they adjust from close, from like near and far, near and far. And so that causes a migraine. And so when I have glasses on, and I have a very weak prescription, but it's just enough that my eyes don't go cross when I'm like reading something and I look up at something my eyes don't go cross so I don't get dizzy I don't get migraines anymore and I can actually like focus when I'm reading which is really nice that was a tangent mm -hmm. um but yes the last thing that I want to talk about this video is a lot longer than I expected but the last thing I want to talk about is my ball winder now this is a new acquisition for me and I also need to get a swift to go along with it because I may or may not have tripped over my dog last night and broke it. Now granted, it was already broken. It's been held together by masking tape for the past four, five years when my husband then boyfriend tripped over it in my dorm room and fell on top of it and broke a few pieces. So it's time. <laughs> but I recently purchased the Stan Wood Needleworks Ball Winder. This is, I think, the 10 ounce one. It's, it's green. I love it. So you feed your yarn through here, and then you also feed your yarn through here. And it is just the smoothest. It doesn't hurt my arm. It doesn't ruin my yarn. I love it and it's not like loud and creaky it's like this really nice satisfying sound that I really like and I just um, you have a clamp here and I just clamp it on my desk which I'm sitting at right now I clip it on the edge of my desk so that I just have to set up my swift and then I can just wind a skein of yarn which is really really easy and this fits it's a jumbo winder so you can get a large skein of yarn wound onto this like a skein of knit collage could totally fit onto this, which I think is really cool. Um, so that I don't have to worry about if my ball winder is going to break because my yarn is too heavy. But I love this. I upgraded this from a knit picks ball winder that I had for five years. So it was time. And also this is not ridiculously expensive. I know there are some ball winders that are in like the hundreds. I think this was like $75 ish. So it's a really affordable, really nice ball winder. And I know that that's not affordable for everybody, but for people that need to wind yarn pretty constantly, I'm just going to keep doing this. <laughs> for people that need to wind yarn, uh, constantly and not cry because their yarn winder ate some of their yarn and they had to cut it into like six balls. This is, I highly recommend this as an investment. It was for me, but it's everything that I need. So I love it. And with that, those are all of my favorite things tool edition. So I hope you like this video. I will try to link as many things as I can below and I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. Bye!